critical values. Okay. Now, our critical values are based off a chi-squared distribution. Now, our chi-squared distribution is a positively skewed distribution. Okay. Well, it depends on degrees of freedom. Okay. But let's just keep in mind that this value here is zero, and this tends to positive infinity out in this direction. Okay. Now, as I said in previous videos when we were looking at this particular test, if there was no difference between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies, we'd expect each one of these values to be zero. And then the sum of all the values would also be zero. So actually, if there's no evidence to suggest that there's a difference between the observations and the expected, okay, the chi-square test statistics should be effectively zero or very, very close to it. So the, the logic of this test is that the further we are away from zero, okay, Okay. The more evidence to suggest that what we've observed is actually different to what we've actually hypothesized. Okay, so the question is, what's this critical value here? What is this value here? Okay, okay, uh, that has a certain amount of area in this tail. Now, the area in the tail is based off our significance. In this case, it's alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So we're putting all the area in the tail, because any test statistic that is here has a probability. Okay, that we'd only observe a test statistic as extreme as that. Okay, at least 0 0.05 times uh, amounts of the time, or with a probability of 0 0.05. Okay, so we need to go to our critical. We need to go to our chi-square tables. Okay, our chi-square tables. We need to pull 0 0.05 of the area under the curve to the left, to the to the right-hand side of our critical value. So our p-value, our p is well, not our p-value. The probability in the right-hand tail is 0 0.05. Okay, and our degrees of freedom. Okay, is we know there's four degrees of freedom, so we're down to four. So this should give us the critical value okay, for a curve with four degrees of freedom that has 0.05 of the area in its right-hand tail. Okay. Now, if I can just find, let me just actually have a look around here. I don't know what I'm at to do with them. If I can find my tables. Okay, I have my tables here. We have a set of tables okay, uh, that represent the chi-square distribution. It's probably hard to see here. Okay, That's what it looks like. I'm looking for four degrees of freedom which is four degrees of freedom is here, okay? And I'm looking for 0 0.05 of the area in the right-hand tail. So what I end up with is I end up with a, a critical value. If you can see that, a critical value of 9.488. So this value here is 9.488. In other words, okay, any test statistic bigger than 9.488, okay, that's my critical value, has a probability of at, at of at most 0 0.05 of occurring. Okay, so now we're ready to make our decision. Okay, now don't forget we only reject. This is our rejection region. Okay, the rejection region is in this part of the tail. We only reject if our test statistic is in that area. Now our test statistic is 11.52. Okay, now 11.52 is in there okay 11.52 is 11.52 units away from zero so it's out here so that's actually where our chi squared test statistic actually is it's in the rejection region so now we can make our decision okay so now we can make our decision so let's make our decision okay so step five in our test is our decision okay and all i'm going to say is this is clearly okay our chi-squared test statistic, which is the magnitude of the difference between the observations and the expectation, is bigger than our critical value. What I mean by that is that 11.52 is bigger than 9.488. In other words, what I'm saying is I'm in the rejection region. I'm out further in the right-hand tail than what I actually need to be. Yeah, Clearly that's the case. And as such, and as such, we reject H0. This is important. We reject H0. We reject H0, okay, in favor, in favor of HA, okay, the alternative, yeah, okay, at the 5%, at the 5% level of significance, okay, significance, okay. And now we can make our inference, okay? Now, because we're rejecting, okay? We are rejecting here, okay? So we reject. So because we're rejecting, we can make our inferences, yeah? So clearly chi squared is bigger than C. And as such, we reject H0 in favor of HA at the 5% level of significance. And now we're making our inferences. And infer, infer, yeah? That the observed distribution, that the observed, okay? distribution distribution okay is non normal 
It's not normal. Okay. And this is this is what we've actually done here is using the chi squared goodness of fit test. Okay, we've shown using the chi, the chi squared goodness of fit test. Okay, we've shown that our observations are non-normal. Okay, we've shown that the distribution shape is not bell-shaped. Okay, and that's what's really important for us here. Okay, well that's what we were trying to that's what we we're trying to do. Okay, at the very start. But I mean, basically this test is a chi squared goodness of fit test. To undertake a goodness of fit test, you need observations. And you need expectations, you need observed frequencies, and you need expected frequencies. And only with these two things can we calculate that test statistic. So at the start of this question, we were given some we were given some uh, observed frequencies with respect to a particular variable. The variable had a number of categories, okay, albeit it was ordinal, okay? It is categorical, okay? And sorry about that, let me just get rid of that there, like that phone call. But we had observed frequencies. We built our expected frequencies from assuming that these upper bounds and calculating the area to the left hand side of these upper bounds, yeah, based off a Z statistic. What area would we expect to be under a normally distributed curve, yeah? And more importantly, under the standard normal curve, okay? And we calculated the proportion that we'd expect in there, which gives us our expected frequencies, okay? So that's the important thing here is that the expectation which is what our null position was built from, okay, is our expected frequencies we generated from a normal, a normal curve. Uh, and in this case, we rejected that in favor of the alternative. So if it's not in, in the sense that it's not normal, okay? So guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and once again, uh, I hope that this video was in some way intuitive. And more importantly, I actually hope that was actually helpful for you. It's actually quite a long video there, but there's a lot to do in this particular test, okay? And once again, thank you for watching. Okay, bye-bye.